Good morning and Boker Tov, everyone. Imagine I told you that we discovered a book with your personal family history, your personal great-great-great-grandparents and ancestors from 4,000 years ago. You would be so excited to read every single word and page about their lives. Well, we actually have such a book. It's called the Torah. And this week we start reading about our first ancestors, Abraham and Sarah. And then we're going to read about their children, Isaac and Rebecca, and then their grandchildren, Jacob, and the 12 tribes of Israel. And we know so much about their lives from the Torah that was passed down from generation to generation. How exciting, how many people in the street know who their ancestors were even a hundred years ago, let alone a thousand, two thousand, three thousand, and four thousand years ago. And we open this week's Torah portion with an amazing promise from God to Abraham. God says, go to the land of Israel and I will give it to you and your descendants. I will make you into a great nation. You will be renowned amongst all the nations of the world. You will be a blessing for mankind. Those who bless you shall be blessed. Those who curse you shall be cursed. And here we are 3,800 years after this promise and every single word was fulfilled. As a matter of fact, just yesterday there was an election in Israel. Here we are, 2022, in the land of Israel that God promised to Abraham close to 4,000 years ago. And we are renowned. We're only 15 million Jews in the world. But everyone knows about the Jews. Everyone talks about the Jews. We're on the cover of all the newspapers. Just as God promised, you will be renowned. You will be a blessing. We've been a blessing to every civilization, to mankind in every generation. Those who bless you shall be blessed. All the promises, all the predictions, all the prophecies came true. But here's something amazing. When you read this week's Torah portion, you think, okay, after such blessings, Abraham's life is going to be easy, smooth sailing, challenge-free. But the whole parsha is Abraham dealing with one challenge after another. First, he goes to Israel. There's a famine. He has to go to Egypt to find food. Then in Egypt, his wife, Sarah, is abducted because she's beautiful. And God has to intervene to rescue Sarah. Then there's a quarrel between him and his nephew, Lot, and he has to separate from his nephew. Then his nephew, Lot, is abducted and he has to go fight a war to redeem him. Then he can't have children. He's having infertility problems, struggling to have children. He says to God, what is my life worth if I have no ear to pass it on to? So finally, his handmaid, Hagar, his second wife, gets pregnant. But then she has a quarrel with Sarah and she runs away from the house. And the whole Torah portion is filled with Abraham dealing with challenges. And the message is very clear that just because God gives you a blessing doesn't mean that you're not going to have to have determination, persistence, and never lose hope under all circumstances. Everyone's life has challenges, even Abraham's. But the greatness of Abraham was not that he had no challenges in his life, but that he had faith in God's blessing and had determination and persistence and was never defeated by the challenges that he faced. Rabbi Benjamin Blech, who's a rabbi in New York, a man who's now most probably in his 90s, tells the story that when he was a young rabbinical student at the age of 21, he got his rabbinic ordination. And he and a couple of his friends wanted to celebrate getting the rabbinic ordination after years of hard work. So it was 1956, they decided to go on vacation and they decided to go to Cuba, pre-Castro Cuba. He tells the story how he and his two rabbinical colleagues were driving around Cuba, beautiful Havana, with their taxi driver slash tour guide. And they passed this beautiful estate and their taxi driver said, this is the home of Ernest Hemingway. And Rabbi Bluff said, stop the car. He said, why? He said, I wanna go in and meet Ernest Hemingway. And the taxi driver said, you can't go in without an appointment. He said, just stop the car, please. He went out with his friends, knocked on the door. The house attendant came to the, came to the, uh, door and they, he, he said how can I help you and they said we would like to meet Ernest Hemingway he said do you have an appointment they said no they, he, they said to him just tell him that three rabbis from New York would like to see him and the housekeeper came back a, a minute or two later with a look of shock on his face surprised and said well Mr. Hemingway we would like to see you they were ushered into his study and here was Ernest Hemingway together with his wife, Mary. And they had a beautiful conversation which lasted close to an hour. And in the conversation, Ernest Hemingway said to these rabbis, you know, I've always wanted to meet rabbis, but I never had the opportunity. And he told them that he himself 
had spent a lot of time studying religion. He said, I'm not a spiritual person, but I studied many, many religions, and even started practicing certain rituals. And he said to these rabbis, I noticed something unique about Judaism. He said, most other religions are religions of death, meaning they see this world as a way to just prepare yourself for paradise, for the world to come, to gain entry into the afterlife. They see this world as a place that has to be renounced for the next world. He said, but not so Judaism. Judaism is a religion of the living. It's about life on earth. It doesn't focus on the afterlife. It, it believes in it, but it focuses on this world. And Rabbi Blach and his colleagues said, absolutely, as we know, one of the most overall encompassing commandments in the Torah is choose life. Well, tragically, just five years later in 1961, the man who wrote the words, the man was not created to be defeated. Man can be destroyed, but not be defeated. Took the barrel of a gun with the very hands, hands that he wrote all these great works, masterpieces, great books that we still revere till today, took his own life in an act of suicide. Judaism teaches us life has challenges, but man is not made to be defeated. We must persist. And like Abraham, when we do, 3,800 years later, we're here to tell and to celebrate the story. Have a wonderful day.